Hello and welcome to Afterlife Topics and Metaphysics. Uh, this is Cyrus. I hope you're all having a great kind of uh, end of the world light. I like to call it an apocalypse light, basically. Look, I think we'll, we'll all be fine, but it is sort of like a diet apocalypse. And I may as well make the most of it and um, work on stuff while you're at home. Great time for reflection about life, meditation, work on that book you've always wanted to write, maybe work on that business that you want to launch once things come back under uh, control again in the world, hopefully. So a lot of opportunities still to think about during this whole mess that just keeps going and going. As a quick update about my own health and my illness, so I will say that we're past three weeks since I first began having symptoms of what I am supposing is the V virus, the virus that shall not be named because of uh, censorship policies on this channel. But uh, it's been over three weeks, much like a zombie virus. This thing came back again, even since my prior video where I thought I was completely over it, uh, had some pretty uh, weird symptoms in my lungs that uh, you know, flared back up again, small fever, almost like a burning sensation in my lungs. I was talking to other people who were reporting the same symptom. Pretty weird, pretty crazy. Um, I realized though that I, I think this is the last leg of it since we're over three weeks now. And I think that, um, yeah, this is pretty much, I'm, I'm sure this is the finale. Uh, so that was like three days ago that I began having these weird lung symptoms. Now that has cleared up today. So most likely I'm out of the woods with this thing. Um, technically, even though know, the doctor here x-rayed my lungs and said I did not have the virus because there wasn't enough signs of damage on the lungs, but literally all of my symptoms have matched it to a T. I really just don't think medical professionals at this point fully understand what's going on. Even the tests themselves are not always accurate. I hear that there's a l large margin of inaccuracy. So it's been quite an ordeal. It's also why I have not been as active on this channel yet. Just the um, stress of dealing with this whole situation has made me not want to do as much work as I usually do. Instead of doing lots of videos and doing uh, you know lots of posts and content, the stuff I usually do, I've been more inclined to just sit around and not do anything, play games or watch TV or whatever. It's just like the stress has made it uh, more difficult. But now I'm, I'm getting back on them, saddling up that horse again and getting back to it. So let's uh, dive into things now with today's topic, which is from Susan Young. Susan Young is one of the patrons of this channel. And Susan uh, always has very interesting stuff to share, including her own journey with grief and the afterlife. And she made a very interesting post that um, really summarizes many of the points that we make on this channel. A lot of a lot of those um, kind of um, old uh, old points that I I feel like I've, I I never drive them home quite far enough. So let's kind of rehash that a little bit, but go over this you know just this very important idea uh, concerning morality, moral relativism, and the nature of bad people and how that affects things on a bigger metaphysical level. Before we jump into this, by the way, you are watching Afterlife Topics and Metaphysics, one of the few places on YouTube that will dive into these subjects and go into the deep end of the pool. If you like this kind of stuff, please hit that subscribe button. Consider becoming a patron over at patreon.com forward slash Afterlife Topics. And a big shout out to the patrons who have been helping out during this whole time. Some people even donating and helping me out during this crisis in terms of getting out of the country I'm stuck in or helping with medical bills and things like that. So um, you guys are really great for uh, initiating that kind of stuff. I really appreciate the support for this channel and the support for this work. Um, you guys really are awesome. And so thank you so much. It truly really is like, even though this is a small channel, this has got to be the best little fan base in the world. So thank you guys so much. Okay. so. Uh, let's dive into what Susan has to say. So I'm, I'm just going to read from the top. Susan says that um, I want to share a very strong evidence that I got from a well-known medium who has about a 95% accuracy level, but she doesn't want to name who it is. And her feelings about how many times she's heard that um, somehow everything when you cross over is forgiven and that um, they are high-fiving 
the attackers, the assaulters, the people who have done very bad things to them after crossing over because all is forgiven. We all become omniscient, omnipotent, light beings or whatever. And so nothing we do in this world matters. This is kind of the new age um, mantra, doctrine, whatever you want to call it. But this is the, the primary belief of people who are heavily steeped in kind of new age mysticism. And a lot of this comes out of books from the channeling aisle. It comes out of um, it comes out of um, well, so some of the more popular authors have actually alluded to these types of concepts, but there usually isn't any verifiable source that comes from like direct spirit communication. In my opinion, it is actually their opinions. Like this is the way I see it: is that these ideas that you can you can get away with anything, literally get away with murder, and you don't have to worry about anything when you cross over. Again, it's a very sketchy ideology to me, and uh, the implications of it. Well, I've talked about it at length on this channel, but for one thing, it's moral relativism. What would happen if a new age belief like that supplanted even uh, more traditional beliefs in terms of things like the golden rule and being good to one another? What if it's optional to be good to one another because everything you do is forgiven immediately when you cross over and there's no consequences and no self-responsibility? Very scary stuff. I've identified this very early on as being something that it was and will become even more problematic the more some of these teachings catch fire. Because really, I mean, there's no way you can apply this stuff to real life without seeing morality just start to erode because they're saying morality doesn't matter. And <clears throat> so Susan is aware of this issue as well and um, had some interesting information through this medium about the subject. So, um, so she said she wants to discuss how these ideas that people who are, you know, attackers, people brutally assaulting, and I can't, I can't say, I can't say the word, you know, R A P I N G, because um, this video will get uh, blacklisted. But uh, I'll just use the word assault. I think you guys will know what I'm saying. Uh, brutally assaulting them, or even um, taking their lives. So she says, after my reading began, I had many validations about my two daughters together and many other things, her two daughters who are in spirit. A specific details, I was on the phone, he did not know my name, I knew that this person um, abused Brittany. She never wanted me to know much about him because she knew I did not approve of her seeing him and he was an awful person. She hid it, uh, she hid it from me for a long time, but she was extremely psychologically damaged from the experience. There was this person in their life who was abusing her, and I mean that, you know, assaulting her. You, know, you understand what I'm, what, I'm, what I'm talking about here. Uh, so I had her seeing a doctor and begged her to report it. Her mental issues got worse and eventually led up to um, her transition. She w and uh, she was in a really bad state of mind when this happened. So uh, Susan continues by saying, I was always a very involved mom. Even though she was in college, she was my number one priority. She came through and mentioned how this, this person contributed to her uh, passing uh, and was able to verify who it was with his name. So I knew that he had messed her up so badly, but I never quite knew what exactly happened to her that night as one of her, quote, friends did something. The case went to the DA, but nothing more was done. We have very lax laws here in New York and people walk all the time. The point I want to make is that she is not singing this guy's praises. So um, she has had a lot of help over there to get past this and now she is okay. Uh, Susan continues, I have many family over there that have helped her as well, even those that she did not know here. I've also been told many times she is actively working for the underdog, and that is exactly the way she was here. She is the same person she was here, except happier. She's still stubborn, still outspoken. And Susan concludes, I do not believe that the people who cross over are on the higher dimensional plane of existence and are thanking their abusers, as certain New Age authors have claimed including, I will name a name here, a Channeling Eric, that, that group of um, sketchy mediumship readings 
uh, claim that, for example, the Columbine shooters walked hand in hand with their victims into heaven. These types of, again, like I pointed out at the beginning of this video, these types of sketchy claims. Um, so uh, she continues. So why did my daughter discuss this with me if that if 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 this were true? She also came through to another great medium uh, from the Helping Parents Heal group, saying that they uh, were responsible for her transition. This is not the first time she has said it. Um, um, she, Susan continues that her her own mom has apologized for her verbal abuse and um, her husband's father did as well so they carried on you know the feelings the guilt and the issues uh, and um, as far as children who have been abused or had their lives taken they are very well taken care of because of their severe trauma they are also given love and compassion my daughter is also a very strong communicator and is able to express her thoughts to all of us and i know when she is around and that is often she also mentioned to me that I am doing good in this world by sharing my knowledge about the afterlife. She has helped me to move on. So a really great little article by Susan. And uh, ultimately, now the, little, the thesis behind this post is that, um, you know, she, her daughter is fully aware of the incredible abuse that, that, that she had endured uh, at the hands of this person who was also responsible um, for her passing. And, and I, I don't know to what degree he was he was responsible. I don't know the whole story, but the point is is that she's not there high fiving and saying, "Oh, thank you for the learning experience you provided by hor horrifically abusing me." See, that's just not the way it works because the best way to understand life on these higher dimensions is to look around at this world. Now, obviously, it's much different in this world, and there's many many things, many facets of life on that side which. Or um, have maybe little little in common with this world, but there's also a lot that is very similar, and including just how we relate and interact with one another, the guilt, the mess ups, the confusions, and the problems, and the problematic people, and the uh, very dark tendencies of certain people. Um, how well do we forgive people on this side is probably an indication of how well we forgive people on that side. And I do think it requires a level of kind of selfless and non-egoic thinking to be able to separate yourself from a trauma that happened and be able to possibly forgive an abuser. Um, I think that ultimately it is necessary for that abuser to be able to move on and grow and develop versus being kind of uh, um, a prisoner of their own dark actions. Jürgen talks about this a lot in Vistas of Infinity concerning the, um, um, how do I say a word without uh, triggering the censors, um, the, the afterlife environment of uh, certain Islamic people who did very bad acts of warfare. They um, ultimately were seeking the forgiveness of the victims of the, of the actions that they took, and they were trapped in their own kind of nightmare world as a result of those actions where they took their own lives uh, in explosions and then cost the lives of others. I'm becoming the king of euphemisms thanks to YouTube. It's amazing. So, um, you know, the, I mean, ultimately, the best way to understand the other side is to understand this world, understand how we interact with each other here, because so much of what's here carries on into higher dimensions. Things don't automatically get fixed, and people are responsible for their own actions once they cross over, in the sense that you get the life review, all that data, everything you've done, you not only get to exp see it happening, but you have to experience the emotions that you've inflicted upon others and how nice your life was here is basically whether that life review is going to be a really pleasant uplifting process that you can take pride in that you can look at your life here and like really feel good about it or if it's going to plunge you into darkness shame and possibly even a continuation of cruel behavior because it's only going to um, heighten maybe your own self-loathing and you know maybe your own um, sociopathic tendencies toward other people so that life review really is a core process of all of this and you know are you learning lessons here becoming a more loving more empathic person or are you plunging further into darkness and it's up to you it's up to, you know it's up to all of us to make those decisions so that we can make the other side even in either a better or a worse place just like we're making this this world better or worse all the time 
we get to decide how we want the astral civilizations to be, right? And uh, people who choose evil, then there's a lot that they have to deal with and it doesn't just get exonerated. It doesn't just disappear. And believing it does, well, again, that is the path to moral relativism, kind of like a sociopath's wet dream because they would love an existence where you can do anything you want, any evil action you can imagine, but then all of it is just God's will, right? So it doesn't matter what you do. It's almost like some kind of negative entity or stark spirit or sociopathic spirit would love for people to adopt that line of thinking as a religion on this side because that would give them excuse excuses to do anything they want to anybody. Pretty horrifying. That's why I am so adamantly against that philosophy and I will name the authors I will name the folks like Rob Schwartz and the channeling Eric team and people like this who have said variations of this and I'd be happy to have any of them on this show to clear up those things that they've said I also understand sometimes people say things out of a state of ignorance they don't fully understand the ramifications so I don't hate Rob Schwartz I also think he has good work out there and he has some good books but the people, the authors who promote this kind of stuff, though, they have to really double think about this this topic and um, understand that um, not only does it not make sense from a spiritual vantage point, but it could also be very damaging to, to the people who absorb that information. And to always go toward authentic spirit sources. If, this, if the spirit sources are not authentic, then you will probably be hearing variations of these ideas that you can do any bad thing you want to anybody and there's no consequences. Not the way the universe works, not the way, it's just not, it's just not how any of this works. It's like, do you remember that Geico ad where you have the old ladies and they were trying to use Facebook and like, this is my wall and they put like this, you know, like the, they're like gluing photos to an actual wall and that lady was like, that's not the way this works, not the way any of this works. Well. That's how I feel about this topic, okay? The idea that you can do bad stuff and get away with it is not the way it works. It's not the way any of this stuff works. Enough out of me. Thanks for watching. Pick up books like Understanding Life After Death or The Afterlife and Beyond over at Afterlife Topics. You can uh, sign up as a patron or work with me one-on-one -on -one for coaching or consultations. Ask me anything you want. All that helps support this work, helps keep me going. So you can find that info in the description. That's it for now. Actually, I'm going to probably make a couple more videos here and then go veg out and, I don't know, eat cookies and play video games, whatever. Just trying to unwind after uh, a very bumpy last couple of weeks. All right, I will talk to you guys soon.